You're listening to the Teak Nation Podcast, where we strive to educate, inspire, and entertain you with tips and lessons from frauders and friends of TKE. Hello, Teak Nation Podcast. My name is Alex Swinson. I am very excited to be back with you after the last two-week layoff. Have a pretty exciting little treat for all of you listeners today. You probably know if you read the episode description, but we have three members from the Beta Lambda chapter at Auburn University here with us to talk about recruitment. This is the top recruiting chapter in Teak Nation this fall. This is a group that has now jumped up over 140 total members. Uh, they have a lot of really, really great information to share. And if you go back to the conversation that uh, we had last week, that was just me talking for 25 minutes, which I know you all enjoyed. Um, the information they share can be applied across the board. So don't stop listening to this and, and just say, oh, well, Auburn's a 20,000, 30,000 person campus that could never work here at my school. It could absolutely work, and, and I hope that you listen to this intently. I hope you take notes um, because we do talk a little bit about the, the big picture and how they got to where they are and, and why they, they set their sights so high, but we also talk very, very practical skills, tangible things that, that anyone can take on any campus and go do that are going to improve recruitment results. So this is uh, this a little bit of learning time. If you're you're so inclined, I hope that you woke up this morning with an appetite for knowledge because this is your opportunity. So without further ado, excited to get to our friends at Auburn. All right, we are thrilled now to be welcoming a representation from the Beta Lambda chapter at Auburn University. We have three members joining us here. We have Josh Elliott, the chapter president, the preness. We have Jack Watley, the rush chair, and we have Bo Borden, the epi preness. Guys, welcome to the Teak Nation podcast. Thank you for joining us. Really excited to have this conversation and dive in a little bit to how you all rush, because I know that's something that uh, you guys are very, very proud of, as you should be. And it's something that I think a lot of listeners, whether it's alumni or other members, can learn from how you guys have gone about your process. So first and foremost, uh, I don't want to take away the opportunity for you all to brag on yourselves. What is your fall rush number currently? Where did you end for fall rush? So we started with 49 and right now we've got 45 guys. 45. So that is, uh, that's pretty good. Um, that is the number one for those who listened last week. You know, that's the number one fall class antique. All due respect to the guys at Boise, um, they had some guys that they were held over from the spring who they've initiated that have counted toward their total. So right now, Beta Lambda at Auburn is the top recruiting chapter for the fall. I'm curious, going into the fall, what was your goal for Rush? Is that Did you set it higher and fall short? Did you eclipse it? Did you set it right at 45? What was the goal for the group going into this fall? Um, I think we've, uh, I mean, when we started off, uh, we definitely knew we wanted to get to 45 that was really the the main number that when we sat down in um you know april getting ready to start things up i i was thinking 45 that was my number and, and i'm glad you 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 touched on that because that was one of my questions i was going to ask later but you said in april when we started firing things up one of my questions was when do you all start planning for fall rush so you're telling me right april of of last school year is when you got into it. Can you guys elaborate a little more on that? Why do you start that early? And what is it that you are doing in March, April, May of a school year to prepare yourselves for the upcoming school year for recruitment? A lot of other chapters here um, start pretty early. Uh, you know, as early as January, they'll be having uh, rushies come down from, you know, their pipelines that they've had over the years. But since we're a pretty new chapter, um, it's been kind of challenging to do summer rush. So usually in April, they'll send out the, uh, the, the link for guys to sign up for recruitment um, for the fall. And then midway through May is when you can have an event. So we went ahead in April and lined up all of our events for all the summer and just kind of got a head start on that, you know, planning um, what guys could be here that weekend or 
when we wanted to start giving out bids, uh, what events we wanted to have, and really what the plan was going forward. Um, yeah, I mean, when we sat down and started talking about Rush, the main thing I really wanted for the committee uh, to really get to down was, you know, what are things that we need to do while going through a Rush event? What are, what are things that you want to be looking for? Uh, what are things that a guy's saying to you that are, you know, red, red flags, green flags, you know, that type of stuff. That was the main stuff that we were going over in March and April. So when uh, Rush opened up in May, you know, we could go ahead and just get started as quick as possible and get our feet on the ground. You guys, you guys talked about pipelines. You mentioned pipelines. I think that is a concept that not enough chapters utilize. Um, Bo, I want to give you a chance to jump in here. What are some of your pipelines when it comes to Rush? How have you been able to tap into those? And how do you, I guess, how do you keep your finger on the pulse of those? But right, it'd be really easy to establish a pipeline for one or two years and then kind of let it fall off. But how, how have you all built those and maintained them throughout the last few years? Right, right. So, so when me and Josh started, I mean, heck, there was only about 20 brothers in the entire chapter. Um, you know, when I came to Auburn, I didn't have a bunch of friends that really went here. So, you know, going into Rush, I was kind of clueless. I had a few buddies that knew guys, um, you know, at Lambda Chi and, you know, some other fraternities on campus. And essentially the older brothers and new friends of mine that were in my class kind of just said, you know, y'all need to come to this, y'all need to come to this. And I mean, you know, they were starting to text us, you know, as early as January, like Josh said, um, you know, unfortunately at the size that, you know, we were a few years ago, it just was possible, you know, to have a bunch of friends from your high school all of a sudden, you know, kind of be like, Hey, why don't y'all come this weekend? Why don't you call them next weekend, et cetera. Um, you know, now that we've got, you know, 130, 140 guys in the chapter, um, we're really utilizing, you know, friends from home, you know, alumni, relatives, et cetera. Um, because we want to make sure that we're building, you know, the chapter on a bunch of good guys. We're not just trying to, you know, drag in so-and-so from, you know, your high school, just, you know, because they're from there. We're really trying to get good quality guys to help build the chapter further. And so I would say our biggest really pipeline right now is, you know, it's kind of a customer service thing in general, but, you know, the customer is always right. Um, the rush is always right. You know, if, you know, they're not, they're not having a good time, you know, figure out what they would do to have a fun time, but, you know, just trying to get, you know, get to know the guys to a better point instead of just, you know, dragging people in. And so we're trying to get the brothers now to just find friends or relatives they may know that are coming to Auburn and say, look, why don't you come take a look? And so that's kind of what we're doing. Yeah. I love that point because that's something that I preach to other groups when it comes to rush when you say the the customer's always right, the rushy's always right. Every single every single member that walks into the house or that you interact with deserves the respect and attention that that he is the number one priority on your mind in that moment. And maybe maybe you talk to him for two seconds. You say this guy's never going to be a teak at Auburn, right? And and you can equate it. You guys are are obviously SEC country. Probably a bit of a sore subject, but the reason that Nick Saban is is one of one of, if not the best recruiter in the history of college football, is because whether it's a fourth string kicker or whether it's Tua Tonga Vailoa or Jerry Judy that he's sitting in their living room, he treats them like they are everything to him in that moment. That's why people go play at Alabama, and you know this the then Auburn right gets the the runoff from there. Um, but uh, that was a joke. Um, but. I think that's a really important point when you say, right, when, how you treat those guys that you are that you are rushing is is extremely important. So I'm glad you you brought that up. Josh and Jack, anything else to add on that pipeline piece? Because I don't want to I don't want to let that go by. I think that's a really important part of how you not just how you get a big rush class, but how you really build a dynasty and build a group from 40 guys to 100 to 150. Well, I mean, with the pledge class we made this past year, I can say that um, one of the biggest pipelines that we really had were, were people that uh, accepted that were in friend groups that were rushing. You know, um, we had a big group from Lakeland, Florida, and that came through uh, two to three guys that initially accepted. And, you know, they brought their buddies. And we had a guy that's uh, from Vestavia, and he brought, you know, we bid him, he accepted. And when he accepted next night, he brought five more guys. And I mean, it's stuff like that. And uh, like Bo was saying, it's customer service. Like we made sure that 
everyone that walked through that door had the same ability and chance to join Teak. And um, there was absolutely, you know, no discrepancy because of where someone was from. And um, I would say that that variety that we have in our pledge classes and in this fraternity is kind of what sets us different than a lot of the other chapters here at Auburn. I think our biggest selling point is, you know, as soon as you're here, you're pretty much a brother. Um, you're not going to be treated any any differently than that. Um, a lot of guys seem to really buy into that. As soon as they join, they were coming up to us and they're like, hey, I've got a couple of buddies I don't want to bring by. Oh, that's great. They bring them by. And then, you know, we talk to them for a little bit and then we're like, we'd send them back over there and say like, hey, what do they think? Um, you know, we really like this guy. Do you think he'd accept? Stuff like that, you know, using our pledge class before they're even initiated to help us recruit and just have everyone buy into our vision. Yeah. And, and, and finding that, that alpha in a friend group or the couple alphas that that's a huge piece too, uh, that you touched on that is, is absolutely right in line with, with, I think what a lot of really successful groups do, they know you could right you, you only have so much time to spend on rush, even if it's 24 hours, right? There's only 24 hours in a day. I presume you're sleeping for some of it. If you cut that 24 hours up or that 18 hours up amongst 20 guys, each guy is getting less than an hour of your time. Whereas if you cut up 18 hours amongst two guys, they can go out and get you 10 guys each. Now you can really focus in and hone in on those couple that are going to make a big difference. So that's something that, right, it, everyone should be treated with respect and treated uh, as though they are very, very important, obviously, in the grand scheme of things. But you know, spending a couple extra hours with one person might make a huge difference, might be a seven or eight man swing versus trying to hit every single person equally. So that's that's an important thing. And I think that just comes with time and and comes with feel. And it seems like you guys have, have found that balance. You found that blend to make sure that you're not just interacting with every potential new member, but you are really focused on those, those heavy hitters, those ones that are going to bring more people to the chapter. Um, you guys have mentioned it, and I don't want to overlook this either because I, I'm frankly, I, I'm blown away. I remember my first year on staff was 2013 and we were doing, we were doing phone calls for RLCs and this is well before your time, the, the three of you, but um, for whatever reason, someone asked me to call Beta Lambda, asked me to call Auburn. And I looked, I looked on the carry scorecard. It was like a 13 man chapter. And I was trying to get them to send two guys to the RLC. And it was like, you were asking them to just, you know, drive their car off the side of the road into a ditch. It was, it was a miserable conversation. And even, you know, looking back at the last six, seven years of, of recruitment production from you all, it's, it's 45 right now. I think you said 39 last year before that it was 29, at least the numbers I have 29, 20, 19, 19, 12. So six, seven years ago, you had 12 guys that you initiated all year. And this year you have 45 in the fall alone. What, what mentality shift have you guys either tried to bring or have you seen in the chapter to go from that 20, 30, 40 man chapter to 140 guys? Because something's got to click there. It's a decision. It's not just something that happens by accident. What was it that, that you can point to to say, this is where we turned it around. This is why we've been so successful compared to where we were five years ago. I would say, you know, I would really say a big part of that, we pride ourselves in making sure that it's a real brotherhood. I know, you know, heck, when me and Josh were rushing, um, you know, you go to some places and the guys just didn't really take the time to come meet you. You know, they're like, oh, you know, go talk to some of the other rushies. And it's kind of like, well, that's kind of crappy. You go to the teak house, every one of the guys that was there, I mean, came up to you, was like, oh my God, like, have you been, man? You know, is there anything I can do for you, et cetera. And you know, I think we still have that mindset now where we're not just a fraternity. We're really like a family and a brotherhood. Um, you know, we all hold each other to high expectations, but at the same time, you know, we're also there to support each other if things don't go as planned. And, um, you know, again, another thing too that we kind of pride ourselves in is making sure that the younger guys feel like, like their, you know, voices are heard and their opinions are heard. You know, when I joined, that message was kind of sold to me was that, you know, you're going to be a part, a big picture of part of this at some point, you know, throughout your time at Auburn. Um, I want to see y'all, you know, make a big change. And so, you know, it's, it's just been a great thing to do. And we've still kind of prided ourselves in telling these new guys like, hey, y'all are the voice of the chapter, you know. Um, again, I, it's just, it's really is like a brotherhood and a family. It's not just a fraternity to us. And I think that's a big selling point. 
another big shift was, um, you know, just how important Rush is. It's, we treat it as the most important thing because um, without it, you know, we wouldn't have anybody here. And, you know, getting everyone to buy in to coming to all the Rush events and getting to know the Rushies um, is a big part of that. You know, I'll have when there's 30 to 40 guys coming through on a given night during fall rush, uh, you know, I can't obviously go talk to every single one of them. I'll send, you know, one of our eight committee guys to go talk to a specific person I'm like, Hey, give me a feel. They can give me a 30 second synopsis of just how that guy is. If he fit here um, instead of me having to go do it. Um, which I mean, I wouldn't mind doing it. I do it with a bunch of the guys, but I can't do it for 30 or 40 guys a night. Right. Um, you know, as soon as we, we, we set a hard date for everyone to move back to Auburn um, because, you know, fall uh, summer rush is really hard for us with everyone being super far away. We don't have a whole lot of in-state guys um, the past two years, but this year we actually got a lot of guys from in-state. So maybe it'll change, but with summer rush, um, it was pretty hard to get everyone down here, but now we have a tough a set hard date of when everyone needs to move in and we'll start rush events, you know, every night at the house, whether it's a cookout or just guys hanging out watching sports or whatever. And we'll have rushies all the way up until the first day of school and just keep pushing, you know, towards the end guys kind of get worn out. I know, but uh, one of the things that we really pride ourselves on this past year was how we kept that pedal to the metal and, you know, just powered through until we hit our number. Well, I like, I like that you're, you're, you're taking control of the process. You're not leaving it to chance. You're not saying, you're not saying, Hey guys, right. Whenever you get back is whenever you get back. If you want to be successful, if you want to see the results that you guys have seen, you have to have those plans set in stone. So I think that's a really important lesson that whether you're a 140 man chapter or 30 man chapter could certainly be applied and looked at as, as a direct line to your success. So um, I think that's, that's phenomenal. Another question I had that you guys, that you guys walked right into and, and Jack, I'd love to hear you talk about this a little bit as the rush chair, how do you get the entire chapter or as, I guess, as much of the chapters you can, maybe it's not all 140 guys. How do you get them bought in to, to be active, to be engaged in recruitment? Because I hear that a lot from groups that struggle is, oh, it's just, you know, three guys that are trying to carry the load. They're trying to meet everyone. They're trying to talk to everyone. It sounds like you all at least have more than three guys, right? More than just the three of you that are really ex not just excited to rush, but very active, very involved. How do you, how do you get that feel? How do you get that buy-in amongst the chapter that leads to the activity once you're actually in the middle of rush? Well, I mean, yeah, when I, I um, I'm a sophomore and I, uh, you know, two years ago, I was rushing and when I came here, like Bo said, it was, it was amazing seeing how much of the chapter wanted to get to know you just on a first night basis compared to where other fraternities, you know, I'd rushed previously before then I, it was, I was walking up to them, introducing myself. And that was a big thing for me. But once I, you know, got uh, nominated and accepted the role as rush chair and got brought in, Bo and Josh, I mean, set a great example for me. They've obviously been doing this a lot longer to, than I have. And um, the previous rush chair, William Paul, as well, uh, they really showed me that uh, if you put forth the effort and you make an example of yourself by putting in the hard work, being at the events every night, really talking, trying to talk as many rushies as possible, doing your part, the whole the chapter will follow. Um it was there. Uh, there were some rough times. I mean, it was not always the whole chapter there. It's like Josh was saying, summer rush. We, you know, had our setbacks, had our problems. But when it came time to get down and into it, the chapter came together, and we did a great job. Um, so yeah, Josh, as as the leader of the chapter, is a guy who it all it all falls on eventually. You know, what role do you play in that? What role do you play in getting the entire group motivated, getting guys bought in and getting them ready to go for rush season? Um, I think uh, one thing that I remember when we were a lot smaller was they would have, you know, mandatory events um, in which, you know, it's treated like chapter. If you miss, you get so many excused, whatever. Um, so we would have a check in sheet at all the events to make sure guys were coming. Um, if guys weren't talking to people, you know, just go up to them and be like, hey, go go meet some guys. And they ended up having like a really good time over here. Um, you know, they meet some of their friends or they meet their future little brothers and stuff like that. So I think it's really cool to see just about every August, the past two or three years, um, seeing the whole chapter come together during a rush week is something that's really special. Well, it should be fun, right? I mean, that people look at it as as work and as this, you know, we got to 
make these plans and we got to make these flyers and we got to make banners and it's such a pain, right? Like bringing new men into a chapter should be enjoyable for everyone. And so I, it, it's all about mentality at that point. It's, it's, yeah, it is work, right? It's hard work to get 45 guys. They don't fall into your lap. It doesn't happen overnight. Like I said earlier, but the process, if you fall in love with the process, it becomes very, very enjoyable. And I think you, you all have seen that, right? You've seen like, it's more fun getting 45 guys than 10 guys. So if you, if you put the time and the effort in, it will be enjoyable. You just have to continue to, to push and grind to get where you want to be. So um, I, I, I appreciate you guys sharing a little perspective on, on that side of things. One thing that I want to try and, and tie into the best I can, and I know you all, you only have the experience at Auburn because that's the Teak experience that, that you've been given. But when you think about whether it's Auburn, whether it's LSU, whether it's USC, or whether it's uh, a 25-man chapter in the Midwest or in the Northeast, I think there are certain principles around rush that can apply everywhere. Yes, some groups have a house, some groups don't, some groups have a 12 man rush committee, some groups have a one one man rush committee, the rush chair, but I'd like each of you if you could to just to just share maybe one principle that you all have adhered to at Beta Lambda that you think can apply all over the country, all 220 of our chapters, every single group in Teak could work on that might help them be a little more successful in recruitment. Uh, communication, uh, communication between uh, the chapter, uh, your committee, and the rushies, uh, making sure everybody's on the same page is so key, and it's something that we preached all summer and all fall, um, you know, making sure the committee guys not only knew what was going on, but what what's your opinion on how we're doing for this event? What do you think we could do better? How could we change things if things aren't doing too well this past event how could we change these up try and get more guys to come that communicating like that really i think is a big uh cornerstone in having a good uh rush season josh you want to go <laughs> yeah i got it um yeah like jack was saying with the communication um jack did a really good job this past year keeping up with all the guys that came through um you know, it's hard to remember guys that came through in June or July all the way up until August, especially when you've had, you know, 100, 150 guys come through the house. During that time frame, Jack had a list of everybody. He knew exactly who they were, who was texting them. Um, we kind of divvied it up to, you know, who was going to be at that event to text about the, that event. And then towards the end of the year, you know, you're texting, adding up, you know, 100, 200 guys to your list. Um, I think a big thing is, uh, not having one person do it because when you're texting an individual, they're coming to the house expecting to meet that person that the, that's been texting them. So if it's one person, they can't meet all 200 people that come by. They've got to have, you know, a specific individual. So that's why we kind of used our uh, committees to divvy up all the responsibilities of texting and meeting these guys. And then at the end of the night, they come, we'd all come together and discuss everyone that came through um, and what to, what to do with, potential new guys and whatnot yeah i would say you know the a big principle that i know you know josh has been preaching throughout this thing too and you know something that we've kind of seen this whole time is it's not over till it's over um you know no matter how hard it may seem to text 200 a thousand guys and you know if you only have four guys on the committee or 80 um you know it's not over till it's over. Don't stop texting those guys. Don't stop trying to reach out and, you know, trying to get guys to the house. I mean, make sure that you're pushing them as hard as, you know, you're pushing yourself to get them out and, you know, have a good time. Again, it's, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be easy, but at the end, if you work really hard, it'll pay off. Yeah. The, the three things that I, that I heard in there to boil it down, I think the three words, Jack communication, Josh, organization, and Bo, persistence. I, and, and those are three, I mean, that's, that's spot on and, and, and couldn't have said it any better myself. I think, Josh, what you said specifically, there's a ton of gold in there that uh, you, you glossed over a little bit, not on purpose, but just throughout the course of, of sharing what you were sharing, just about having that list and, and having a, a person in the chapter assigned to every single person on that list and for the rush chair to know, okay, when's the last time you texted this guy and, and what did you say and, and what did he say back? But, but having that for 150 people is not easy, but to your point, it pays off. It, it, it works. 
And so those steps are, are crucial. And I think that's, well, I don't think, I know that's what separates groups who rush really, really well and groups that don't do as well is, is that level of organization within the chapter. I also want to come back to something you said, Jack, because this is another, another thing that I think some, some chapters struggle with. You said you communicated well and, and you had good conversations about when to pivot or when maybe something wasn't working. Do you have a specific example of a, an event that didn't work or a, a, a time frame that didn't work or something that wasn't working for you all that you adjusted on the fly, made a change, and it paid off for you? Absolutely. Uh, start a summer rush. Um, start a summer rush, not only were we having trouble uh, getting rushies out with us, we were having trouble in our own committee, you know, people communicating, people speaking, you know, I was being told like for the rush, I remember for the first rush event, I was told that there could be anywhere between, uh, you know, 10 to 20 people showing up and one person showed up. Um, so it was, it was a really aggravating and frustrating thing. And so I remember, you know, um, that Sunday we had a meeting over zoom and I, I, I sat down and I said, look guys, that's not going to, like, we can't keep doing that. That, that can't keep happening. We got to, if you're texting someone and they say, yes, let's say they say yes, Thursday and the event is next Friday, text them that upcoming Wednesday, ask them if they're still coming, text them that same text them this day of the event, ask them if they're still coming. Like Bo was saying, being very persistent, don't stop texting those people until they tell you they've gotten a bid somewhere else or they're done rush um because no matter what there's still an opportunity to grab someone even if they aren't texting back even if they are you know saying they're going to come and then last minute ditching you there's still a chance to get them and tying back to that communication i mean once we got that really figured out and once everybody started meshing well and listening and communicating it just worked really well um but for a while, communication was actually one of our biggest problems. Don't stop texting someone until they tell you they got a bid from somewhere else or they're done rushing. I think that is, I mean, that's, that's, that's brilliant because, right, you, you get ghosted on a couple texts and just throw your hands up and, oh, shucks, this guy's not going to respond. And, and maybe he's not. But, right, if there's 15 guys that are doing that and three of them turn into teaks because you stayed on top of it, that was worth it. So that's um, – that's wonderful. And, and I just, uh, I, I see all the time groups that, right, they have their, their week long rush schedule and the first event doesn't go well. And then they just go, they just go along with it. They go right in their second event. Cause, Oh, well, these are our plans and we can't change them. Right. And well, that's a bummer. Maybe, maybe more people will show up tomorrow night. Well, they're not going to show up tomorrow night if you don't do anything different. So that the story about one guy showing up to your first rush event is uh, I mean, it's, it's really interesting because Right. That's that's not good, as you said. And you guys all recognize that. And you made a change in that moment that led to now 45 men becoming becoming teeth. So I appreciate you sharing that. Absolutely. Yeah. I want to uh, I want to look at what's coming up. What is next for you all? I know last year you did uh, some heavier spring rush. And I know some of that was probably a product of COVID. But what are you looking at? for the spring? What are your plans for the year? Do you have a, a higher initiate goal for the entire year? You know, what, what's coming up for you all? These 45 guys are, are getting educated. They're going to get initiated, I know, but, but what's next for Beta Lambda? I think we're looking at adding uh, a couple of spring guys once again. Um, you know, it's always pretty easy when you got freshmen in the fraternity living in the dorms with these guys, they can snag up a couple of friends to bring some, to some rush events or whatever, what, what not. Um, I know, you know, when we had that big event the other night, uh, a couple guys were very interested in joining in the spring. Um, and so this week at Chapter, actually, we're going to be sending out a, a list that you can fill out everyone that you know that's going to rush in the spring so we can go ahead and get a head start. Last year, we actually did, you know, better than what we usually do. But because of all COVID and everything, you know, other chapters did a lot better in the spring because they couldn't do as well in the fall. So we're really trying to capitalize by taking an early initiative and jumping into spring rush and then uh, getting another rush list started for fall. Cause I know, uh, we need to start getting guys, uh, coming down second semester that are going to be coming here in the fall, just get a head start on that. Cause that's what everyone else does around here. Um, we're going to be graduating anywhere from 10 to 15 guys. And, you know, we're going to reload another 45 to 50 guys in the fall. So this chapter is just going to keep on moving and growing. Uh, I'm graduating in the spring, but I'm really excited to see what these guys can do. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, uh, I mean, I, I can't wait to see it. And, and one of the 
I mean, one of the good things, I guess, now, right, of, of having a small chapter before and, and Josh and Bo, you guys joining a smaller pledge class is you're, like you said, you're losing 15 and you're backfilling that with 45. So um, that's only gonna, gonna help you all grow. Where do you guys see the chapter going in two, three years, right? Is there a certain number you're trying to get to of overall guys? Is there a certain rush number you're trying to eclipse in the next year or two? Have you guys had those conversations? I'm just, I'm curious, right, of, of you, you all have done so well to get from where you were five years ago to where you are now, but what, what are some of those longer term plans? And, and especially for, for Josh and Bo, when you guys come back to homecoming two, three years from now, where do you hope to see Beta Lambda? That's a good question. I mean, it's it's funny. So, you know, me and Josh joined as 40 guys and we were just looking to even, you know, get to 100. Um, you know, now that we've hit 140 um, with all the hard work that, you know, Josh and everybody else has been putting in, it's, I don't even know, to be honest, if we've been or even considered, you know, another numbers goal. I think we're just really happy with the quality of guys we've got now, you know. Uh, you know, numbers do play a big role in a lot of things, you know, parties, uh, fundraising for St. Jude. I mean, it Numbers do play a big role in that, um, but I'd be 100% content with, you know, 150 guys like we've got now, 200 guys that are all, you know, good, solid teak men, and, you know, want to make communities better. I'd, I'd be totally fine with that. You know, if there's 100 guys, but they're all good people, I'd still be fine with that. I just, I hope to see the chapter, you know, still thriving when we come back in a few years. I mean, yeah, when Bo said, I mean, it, I will be, obviously I won't be graduating for another few years, but I mean, uh, by the time I was senior, you know, if we hit that 200 mark, if we're over 200, I mean, that would be amazing. But, you know, I think a realistic thing for us to do next year going into rush, obviously I won't be the rush chair. Then it will be a, uh, it'll most likely probably be a uh, one, someone that's a pledge right now. Um, but when they take that role, I'm sure they're going to want to, you know, try and beat what we just previously did and bringing, starting off with 49, I'm sure they're going to want to try and, you know, maybe do 55 or something like that. But I think what, like Bo said, what's just important is to keep getting not just a number, but quality guys, uh, guys that not only go keep this chapter running, but keep it improving. And that's through, you know, uh, benefit nights, socials, uh, and keeping the house not only nice, but even improving it. I mean, just stuff like that is what uh, you just really want to see moving forward. Well, you guys, uh, you've busted two, I think, common myths. One of those is is the brotherhood aspect that, you know, once you get to a certain size, your your brotherhood, whatever that means in specific campuses and with specific chapters means something different everywhere, but that your brotherhood can't, can't be any good, right? Once you get to 100, 120, 150, you guys said it's as strong now basically as it's ever been, and, and you guys are as large as you've ever been. So that is, that's, that's simply not accurate, not true. And then the fact that you said, right, we're, we're just continuing to try and get quality men and you're still putting up 40, 45, 50, right? That quality versus quantity. You can have both if you know how to go find quality men. I think there are 50 quality men on every campus in America that could be teaks, right? It's, it's how do you go about finding them and, and securing them and getting them to join your chapter? That's, a, that's the key. It's not about oh, there were only seven guys that we thought were cool enough to be Teeks. Like, no, there were probably a hundred. You just didn't know how to go find them. So, um, so I, I think both of those points are, are extremely, extremely prescient as well. And, um, I, you know, just here, I think what you're, what you're saying probably reinforces things for a lot of people that are listening that are successful in Rush. But my hope is groups that maybe haven't been as successful or alumni who advise groups that weren't as successful, they can take some of these things you're talking about and go apply them because they are very practical, very tangible ideas that you all are sharing. I, uh, I have exhausted my list of questions, so I appreciate you all getting through those. Um, is there any final thoughts, anything you guys want to share, right? This is, this is the Teak Nation podcast. I don't think we've cracked Spotify's top 20 just yet. We're a few listeners shy, but um, right. Anything that, that you want to share with our listeners, alumni, undergraduates out there across Teak Nation? Yeah, I've got something. Um, for any growing chapters or, you know, smaller chapters that are trying to do the same thing that our chapter has been doing for the past few years and growing through Rush and trying to find those uh, quality guys that uh, just don't lose hope keep keep working on it keep trying new things I mean it is possible to to grow and become a big chapter on campus just because you've had setbacks you've had problems doesn't mean that it's not going to happen 
Yeah, yeah kind of going off with what Watley said. I mean, the other thing too, you know, it's again, don't give up till no turns, you know, left on flipped over, you know, search everywhere for these guys. Um, you know, I met a bunch of our pledge brothers, um, you know, just through classes or, you know, other weird little group meetings and stuff like that. Um, you know, don't give up like Watley said, and, um, you know, just make sure that you're getting good quality guys, you know, it, you're better off having 10 stellar dudes that have good grades, get involved on campus or able to talk to people and be social than have 20 random guys that, you know, you don't really know well and are kind of, you know, flunking out doing X, Y, and Z they shouldn't be doing. Um, focus on the quality instead of the quantity too. I think uh, one of the things that we say all the time, we kind of say it as a joke now, but rush 24, seven, three, six, five, you know, always look for those future prospects. You never know where you're going to find them. Um, and like you were saying at the beginning, how we've kind of grown each year, you know, try to do better than the last group. Um, try to keep getting better in any point, any way you can. Uh, so when we looked at our biggest pledge class ever, it was uh, actually the composite right behind me. Um, we had 43 guys in fall and spring that year. And this past year, you know, with 45, we beat the number. Um, you know, I sat, I sat down when I ran for president. I said, you know, I'm going to bring us the biggest pledge class we've ever had. I'm going to give us the biggest or best social calendar we've ever had. And I'm going to win us a top teak award. Um, and, you know, I think I've done those three things this year um, with the help of my guys and just keep pushing each other. 45 guys, top teak award. And you brought Waka Flocka to, to yeah. Auburn's campus. So I, mean, I would say, I'd say you checked all three boxes. Um, well, thank you, Josh. I think those are, those are great words. To, and uh, congratulations to you guys. Um, seriously, I, I've, I've said it a few times, but just blown away by by not just the success, right? Because there are other groups that have put up 45, 50, right? The Beta Sigmas of the world. Um, but Beta Sigma wasn't 14 guys seven years ago. And, and so just the, the evolution of the chapter, the fact that you guys are so much more engaged and involved with what we're doing at an international level, I think sets an example for a lot of groups. So um, just doing this is, is a fantastic opportunity for me to get to talk to you all and, and pick your brains. Cannot thank you enough. Josh, Bo, best of luck with everything that comes post-college. I'm not sure if I'll see or talk to either of you before uh, before the end of the school year. And Jack, hopefully have an opportunity to uh, engage or, or interact with you at a conclave or RLC or, or maybe both. Cool. Um, can't thank you guys enough. Really appreciate it. Always, as always, you know, let let me know, let let headquarters know if you all need anything. But um, let's see. Uh, let's see what we can do in the spring. And, and hopefully you guys will be at the top of that leaderboard for a uh, for a long, long time here. Hopefully so, Alex. Yeah. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Yeah, guys. thanks, Alex. Thank you. And one final thank you to Jack, Josh, and Bo for their time. Uh, just really fantastic for me to get to, to talk to those guys and, and learn from them and, and be able to take some things away myself, some things that I hadn't thought about before, that I had not worked into the recruitment conversations that I'm having or that our team is having while we're out on the road working with groups. Anytime you have a chance to learn from the best, I think you have to take it. And that is exactly what Beta Lambda has been so far this year. Communication, organization, and persistence. Those three pieces that I know, uh, I don't think I know, can apply on any campus in America or in Canada with any number of students, with any number of fraternities on that campus, communication, organization, and persistence. And for me, if I had to pick one of those, it's persistence. It is not folding, giving up, right? When, when things seem tough, when you, when you don't hit your mark early on, when a guy that you're really excited about bringing into your chapter doesn't text you back after, after two or three days, persistence, being persistent to the point of being annoying. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And, and if someone didn't want you to text them or talk to them, they'd tell you to F off. So uh, don't lose sight of that. Do not give up on Rush. Do, and it's not just Rush. It's St. Jude fundraising. It's it's alumni relations. Don't give up on those things just because the first pass at them or the second pass at them doesn't go as planned. But recruitment is the name of the game. That's what we're talking about. That is what we will continue to talk about. I'm very, very excited that uh, on October 27th, which is a week from the day that this is being released, we're going to be holding a webinar. Um, and the title of that webinar is, We Didn't Hit Our Fall Rush Goal, Now What? 
that is specifically addressing some of the issues that, that we know groups are running into out there and how to get around them and still put together a really strong year as far as new members go. Maybe it's fall rush, maybe it's a second rush, maybe it's spring rush, but myself, Zach Scott and Nick Kimball, two fan favorites of the uh, the Teak Nation podcast, of course, we're going to be having a conversation around how to work through some of those pitfalls and how to pivot, how to adjust if what you did to start this fall is not working and hasn't worked. So that is, again, Wednesday, October 27th. It'll be at 9 p.m. Eastern time. Want to welcome anyone and everyone to attend that. It doesn't just have to be groups who may have only got four guys. If you got 20 guys in the fall, but you were aiming for 25, come join us. Come be a part of that conversation. We want to hit this recruitment conversation from as many angles as we possibly can. So really looking forward to that. That is all for today, though. That conversation, that is what I wanted to tackle, and and I don't have much else for you. So, uh, again, hopefully you took some notes. By all means, listen to it again. Not just trying to pump up those listener numbers. I think you can probably take away things from that conversation the second time, the third time, the fourth time you listen to it. It's only about 25 minutes out of your day to, to sit down and get better at Rush. So uh, hopefully you, you, you believe that that is worth it, and, and hopefully the things that those guys said today – can be applied almost immediately on whatever campus uh, you are across the country or Canada. Thank you all for listening. Really appreciate your time. Really appreciate you all dedicating a, a sliver of your day to the Teak Nation podcast. We will be back with you in two weeks. Until then, don't forget to smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to uh, set an Outlook reminder for uh, Wednesday afternoon. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you are the very first person to know when the next episode of the Teak Nation podcast drops. Again, I'm Alex Swenson. We'll talk to you soon. Goodbye. 